Jack's not my real name. <laughs> these aren't my real features. <laughs> this isn't my real face. Yeah, these aren't my real clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> talk. Man, that's not me. Welcome to episode 9 of Portugal's End Off the Air. Claire, Grace, here with you as per the usual. Uh, thanks so much for clicking on the video yet again. It's kind of hard to believe we're up to number 9. I really can't. I honestly can't. I, I assume someone would have like hit report content or something <laughs> by now and just got this straight off air. <laughs> well, that is kind of the point. Don't, please don't do that. And then you said medical. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's not a funny joke, don't do that. Um, today on the show we have some very lovely guests by the name of Dean, Jack and Bo from the band which I've been to chat about the election and, you know, them being a band as per the usual. And we're also going to be talking records. I took on Borat's debut EP. What did you look at? I'm looking at Melbourne band OPEP. It's their debut album. It's called Stadium Cake. Really beautiful, big folk record. Awesome. So this week I took a look at Mallrat's debut EP it's called Uninvited. Mallrat is an upcoming MC from Brisbane. She's only 17 years old yeah, and such an inferiority oh, complex. My god, to think that like she's 17 now, so when she started writing these songs and stuff, she's probably like what 16. And it's so good. Six tracks, um, it includes like Suicide Blonde, which is the track she put out first on SoundCloud that kind of Drew everyone's attention to her. I really like Uninvited. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, she sings. The title track, track, track is really good. Yeah. She's pretty much yeah, she pretty much sings on that. Yeah. Um, and a couple of the tracks again are produced with her mate Ty Gorilla, who I think that's an amazing story. She just really admired him and was like, hey, and then they just started working together, huh. which is really cool. Um, but she is definitely going to be one to watch. It's just the level of she talks about really mundane kind of kitsch, you know, going to school, blah 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 type stuff. Um, yeah, she does get to rap about going to school because I told you what <laughs> when she wrote yeah. songs. Um, but it's like her insights are very like clever and witty, which yeah. is really cool. I like it when people can sort of be really introspective and make funny or insightful comments about everyday things. Yeah. That's cool. That's kind of like what OPEP have done on their debut record. It's called Stadium Cake. They actually reco recorded it in Nova Scotia, in Canada. Wow. Don't know why, but that's... Nova that's... Scotia. <laughs> it's a funny it's a... name. <laughs> it's a funny name. <laughs> Nova Scotia. <laughs> that's where people go to record their albums, apparently. Yeah, apparently. If you want to make a really big folk album, go to Nova Scotia because OPEP have killed it on their debut record. They've got about three EPs under their belt so far, but this is just such, it's an incredibly put together and polished effort for, you know, your first full body of work. It's just, there's so many different ideas that are just tied together by the vocal melodies. And it's just, I don't really know what my favorite track is yet, but it's just like, okay, you've done a great job. So for Spotlight this week, you may have noticed we have two of these lovely gentlemen actually getting locked up in the middle of the green couch. This is Bo and Jack from Brisbane Band Deeds. Welcome guys. Thank you. The green couch. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for popping by. No worries. Um, I think I'm just going to throw you in the deep end here because it is hashtag Ozpol week of everyone's lives. Let's play a bit of um, would you rather, political would you rather. Oh gosh. Okay. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> we cannot play. This federal election, one of these guys isn't coming back. Clive Palmer, you're from the Sunshine Coast. You yeah. may be familiar with Palmer Coolum Resort. The Clive. <laughs> the, the Clive, Clive Dino. Yeah, the <laughs> Clive effect. Sure. But there's one day to the election, and Clive Palmer's known for surprise tactics. So, if you had to vote for Clive Palmer in the Senate mm -hmm. or Pauline Hanson in the Senate. You're oh, from the Lockyer Valley. I'm from Toowoomba, which is full of racist people. And I was born in Canberra, which is full of racist people. I'm kind of yeah, understanding why, why you're politically apathetic. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in many things, 
the, the political system is certainly something you might just really, really... Do not care for. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't even bother finishing that sentence. <laughs> Clive Palmer or Pauline Hanson? Both. Who do you go for? Whoa. Okay, is there something that tipped you over? No. I don't know, it's Pauline Hanson's got some pretty out there views. So, um, and I guess, yeah, lesser of two evils, maybe. What about you, Jack? I think I'm pretty much in the same boat. There's like, I remember when I was really young and Pauline Hanson kind of came out of the woodwork. Yeah. All ginger and translucent. <laughs> like a termite with a shrill voice. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Clive Palmer, I think, is the only time I would say, yeah, Give Clive a go is under the circumstances. <laughs> What's that slogan? <laughs> Give Clive a go. Well, <laughs> Give him a go. <laughs> like, he's a, yeah. like he's the kid who never gets yeah. picked for sports. Like, go on. Give him a Give go. Give him a go. Go on. <laughs> so, um, what I want to know is, is that this election seems to be the year for protest votes and voting for small parties. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the parties that I think maybe we could get a musician's perspective on is the Pirate Party, mm -hmm. who obviously believe that people should be pretty much allowed to download it whenever they want and it's a distribution problem that needs to be fixed and until media companies or labels fix the way they distribute music then people should be allowed to download it for free and one of the arguments um, I heard the president make recently was labels take all of that money off bands anyway bands only make money from touring so it doesn't matter if people download their music what, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's, I don't know, that's pretty rough. Like, I, think, <laughs> I think that if you're gonna like spend thousands of dollars in order to get something produced or go into the studio and then to put it up online and have people just be like, well, I'm just gonna download it for just free. It's just like, well, come on, man. Like, how are we supposed to even get money to get together to in order to tour or in order to produce another record? Yeah. yeah. So look, I think that Although I do agree with the fact that I think everybody should have the ability to listen to music on any spectrum, but they, I feel like it, they should pay for it. Yeah. I like that they're blaming the system. <laughs> it's like, no nah, man, it's not because I'm like a thief, it's because like HBO won't give me access to it <laughs> on my own terms. Is Simon a musician? Is he, like, That's a good point. Like, you know, does, does he do art? You know, does he expect that all art should be free? He just sits on his computer and downloads Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> no, more to the point, like, you know, if you're gonna, like, download people's music, are you going to see their shows? Are you buying their merch? Like, are you, like, if you feel like you're taking money away from them in some other capacity, are you investing any of the funds that would have gone to them directly? Speaking of records, we'd be remiss to not mention your debut came out um, in June. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, well, look, we, we, we recorded it last year, sort of early last year. The band we were in before, Inland Sea, we went uh, to see Gabinda Doyle. He's just a mad scientist when it comes to like sound and he's incredible what he does. And um, how are you then translating all of that really complex stuff into your live shows coming up? Poorly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're fumbling through it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like any band who's just getting started, we're just kind of finding a way around it, I suppose. But it's going well. Like, we're, what are we operating as a four piece? And that was all was really on the record. It was just like, just playing the music really stupidly, I suppose, is what it is. <laughs> what it's about. But that's kind of something we've always been notorious for. Notorious <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> So for people who want to catch you in the next couple of shows, where do they have to be and when? Well, we're playing uh, at The Helm in, on the Sunshine Coast with um, Osaka Punch and the Ninjas. Nice. So that's, yeah, and then we're playing Tenerife Fest uh, on Saturday, yeah. the 2nd. After you voted. Yeah, after we voted. After we voted. After we voted. After we voted. Yeah. Uh, and then our main launch, AEP launch, is on the 8th of July at Black Bear Lodge with Post Dusk and uh, Big Bad Again. Oh no, that's a good lineup. That's a good lineup. Yeah, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a really really fun night. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for popping by. No, thank cheers. Thank you very much. Really appreciate, really appreciate it. it. Yeah, thank awesome. You. Thank you.
there is so much to go to this weekend, so we have prepared a nice list for you. Starting off on Friday. Start at the Foundry, Gabriella Cohen is playing her album launch. I am so excited, full closure, no details, one of my favourites of this year. Supported by Nice Biscuit and the Family Jordan, it's going to be a real good time. On Saturday? Saturday, obviously, you heard Deeds are playing at the Tenerife Festival, that's going to be great. Um, if you're not getting out that way, Creases are playing um, at the Woolly Mammoth, that's for their new single Impact, which we love, featured on last week's episode, in fact. Also, Nairi is continuing her world domination by playing at the Foundry as part of her album tour on Saturday as well. Done. Go out, vote, and go see some music. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya. Need every sign.